Well, happy almost new year, everybody. Happy almost new year, Haley. You're listening to a best of episode of the Repco Light Home Improvement Show sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And because it's a best of, there are a few things in this intro that we're going to play in a minute that I mention that no longer apply. Anyway, the rest of the content is sheer gold. We hope you enjoy it. Today, we've got a lot of really good organizational stuff that we're going to dig into, right? Yeah, because it's still, you know, close to the new year. Right. And I think that this is always like the time of year. It's when container sales happen. You know, people are putting things away. (laughs) Right. And we have a lot of resolutions where we want to really get control of our lives and our spaces, right? So we thought this is a perfect time to talk about some organization stuff and cleaning and and all of that. Mm Mm-hmm. And before we get into that, I want to tell you how sometimes it doesn't work well, the whole cleaning and being organized and being... Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you have no idea how this actually, how bad it can be. So the other day, I go to visit one of our other um, locations. Actually, it's it's a distribution center. Mm-hmm. And it, so basically, they just got an office there and I'm dropping some stuff off, going to put it on the truck to get to another store. Sure. So I go walking up towards the door with my stuff, and I notice a little back black plastic bag laying in the ground. You know, and and it's garbage. Mm-hmm. Clearly, somebody yeah. has let garbage lay on the ground, and I'm sure it's some passerby or it fell out of a window. Someone littered. Somebody littered. <laughs> And I'm going to fix this because yeah. I'm going to be that person. Because right. we've all seen that person who walks past the garbage. Yes. And then we all think, why don't you just bend over and pick it up? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want to be that person. So I bent over and picked it up. And it was a little weighty. It wasn't just an empty bag. Uh, I was surprised. I know where this is going, Ernie. You do? It's so gross. You know where it's going. (laughs) Yes. Do you think? Yes. Are you think you're right? Oh, I'm right. Okay. Well, we'll find out if you're right. So I haul this little baggie in and drop it on, you know, in the garbage. And everybody's looking at me, and I'm thinking that they're thinking, wow, what a helpful young what a good man. good Samaritan. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? Tell everybody what it was, what you think it was. It was dog poop. Yes! <laughs> How did you know? It's a little black bag on the ground, and it has a little weight to it. <laughs> I never pick this stuff up. I always walk past. Well, that'll teach you. This time, I'm helpful, and I bring dog potty back into the building. Everybody's looking at me like, what are you thinking? <laughs> I probably dropped it in the garbage can. And then I had to fish it out and put it outside again. So cleaning and being organized and being that person doesn't always end well. Putting things <laughs> where you think they should go. Right. They should go in the- be problematic. Right. They've got to go in the right space. <laughs> and we're going to get to all of that in a little bit. I thought that was a really funny, funny experience this week. It's a little yes. bit- a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be me. But, yeah. And I wish I hadn't used the word taste uh, oh in gosh. that. But anyway, moving on. We've got the organization stuff coming up. Yes. Uh, and then later on in the show, I'm really excited. We're going to be talking with Lauren Figueroa, an interior designer. Mm-hmm. She's been on the show a number of times. Yeah. But she's got a talk that she's giving today at the Remodeling a New Home show in Grand Rapids she multiple is. times. Yeah. And we're going to get just a snippet. Of that talk. Yeah, we're getting like the spark notes. Right. So tune in, listen to Lauren. That's coming up in the third segment. And who knows, maybe what you hear is going to make you want to get to DeVos Place later today and catch the whole talk. And at the end of the show, we're going to be highlighting an incredibly exciting topic. (laughs) You always know it's not going to be when you preface it with that. (laughs) It's drop cloth. (laughs) We just, make it exciting, just though. sit tight. I know. I know that really makes everybody twitchy. Okay, they just get to the drop cloths now? I don't want to wait till the end to talk about drop cloths. It's going to be great, though. Do you think it's going to be the canvas ones or just the plastic? Spoiler alert, it's going to be canvas. You're going to want to be <laughs> here for that. Yeah. It's going to be fun. We'll make it fun, and we've got a good sale on them right now, which makes it even more exciting. Exactly. Drop cloths are Who great. doesn't love a sale? We're going to talk about all the different things you can do with a drop cloth. And some of my ideas are pretty brilliant, right? Yeah. That's coming up at the end. Right now, let's start with this whole organizing thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because getting organized is worth it. I have spent 
at least an hour, at least an hour looking at the Internet. And I have discovered that Internet health theorists (laughs) agree with me. (laughs) Getting organized is worth it. Here's what they say will happen once you get organized, because a decluttered, organized home is going to bring relieved stress. Relieved stress. Is that such a thing? I think we the can stress just, that I'm getting relieve is relieved. Your stress. <laughs> Let's just say it that way. That sounds yeah. way more intelligent. Yeah. So a decluttered home will relieve your stress. See how smoothly I did that? Also, it will reduce your time spent cleaning. Who doesn't love that? Yeah, it saves time. Right. The internet theorists, that's what's going to happen when you're organized. It's going to help us focus better. We know that's true. I'm going to be able to focus. How many times, Absolutely. Haley, can't we focus when our desk is cluttered? Because you've got papers everywhere. We don't have to throw stones and point fingers. <laughs> These are our papers. This Sorry, is yes. our space. And that brings wow. to another point that internet, internet theorists say is that when a, when a space is disorganized, it affects everybody in the space, even the people <laughs> <laughs> who didn't create the mess. And oh, you'll attest that. to that, right? Look at that. No pointing fingers. But... <laughs> right. So getting our spaces organized is important. We all know that. Whether the internet theorists are right on everything or not, we know it's important. But the big question is, how do we get there? You know, on the show, we've talked about organization and decluttering before plenty of times. But I think it's one of those topics that really can be explored more deeply. Absolutely. Because I haven't perfected it yet. Well, it's like a human condition. It's not just like, I don't know, you buy this container and you're done. We're talking about some pretty deep stuff here, I think. We are? Yeah. We're going to join the ranks of the internet theorists. (laughs) We are. (laughs) Anyway, our plan today is to talk less about specific tasks to tackle. Or things you should buy. Right, right, right. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to more focus on skills that you should develop. Exactly. Because these are life skills, people. People. (laughs) That's what I say to the children when I'm giving an important talk. Listen up, people. (laughs) And they always say, people. So then I change it to folks, and then they laugh at that, and then we lose focus. So thanks, Haley, for helping us lose focus. These are life skills. These are going to help you in so many different ways. They're going to help me. And that's really who I'm talking to because I am just as guilty of not implementing some of this stuff as, as anybody out there. Absolutely. Now, Haley and I have made selections, made picks about what we think are the key skills, three, maybe four main skills that you've got to have. We have not shared them with each other. So this is absolutely, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Right? Could be... Utter chaos. No, it's going to be no. utter brilliance. And I'm going to let you go first, Haley. The first skill that you think is utterly critical to having an organized, decluttered home and life. Yeah, it's heavy. What is it? Uh, having a place for everything. Mm-hmm. Internet health theorists say oh, the, highly everywhere. organized people strongly adhere to a place for everything and everything in its place philosophy. It makes it easier to stay organized. So. Everything's got a place. That yes. makes perfect sense. My grandma had a little plaque that said that. Really? Yeah. So ah. she she oh, was way ahead of these internet <laughs> No, I think it's true, though. And I feel it's like when I first moved to a place, like a new apartment, when I used to move like every year, right? When I was still renting, I Why'd would you have, have to, to move every year. I'm well, curious about I'd that. Did you not pay the rent? Did you the, get driven no, out? I was just skipping down. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to move on again. We've burnt bridges here. No, I think I was just always looking to upgrade. All right. All right. So you're moving on. Exactly. What was the rest of your point? Okay. So my point was that I would have to pack, right? So I'm purging one that was helpful. But then also when I moved into a place, when I was unpacking, I had to find a place for everything. And when I was done finding a place for everything, I was like, oh my gosh. I feel so organized right now. Like this is the start of a new chapter. I Mm -hmm. have a place for everything. And then quickly, it would dissolve because life takes over. I would buy new things, and those new things don't have a place. So it's something that you have to maintain. I think that's a big part of it. But I think this whole having a place for everything is such a great idea to talk about when we're looking at our tools, our garages, our basements, wherever we keep our tools. Right now, I have a real tool problem. I've had a lot of problems, but tell me about your tool problem. It sounds pretty bad. (laughs) I have a lot of problems. Uh, No. The problem right now is that in the basement, because we've just moved in, and normally this would be a time where I would have a place for everything. I don't have a place for everything. These tools are basically just wherever I 
use them last. And it's not like me. I'm a, a person that really likes to have a specific place for each tool. Like if I could have a pegboard mm-hmm. and have draw the, the out, I would have the outline around each tool because I want everyone to know where it goes and for it to go back in the same place every single time it gets put away. Well, that I think is the big part of that is having a place for everything and right. then making sure everybody's aware of that place. Yes. Now you're really working towards something, and that's why that's an important skill to develop. It's not something that happens instantly, and like you said, it's something that needs to be maintained. Right, because if I buy a new tool and I don't have a place for it on the pegboard, I mean, what do I do yeah, now? I know. The whole thing falls apart. That's my dad's whole life, is reorganizing his tool uh, wall and really? display. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll get something new and, oh, well. Dad's going to be down there for three weeks getting everything <laughs> aligned again. He's like playing Tetris on the wall. Yes, exactly. It's fit. a fun game. Well, I think that's really interesting. My first one, it fits really hand in hand with that. And it's put items away now rather than later. If yes. we can train ourselves to do that, it fits right with what you're talking about. Absolutely. You're in the spot where you're pounding a nail in to hang a picture and you're setting the hammer down. Exactly. Because you'll get to it later. Right. But you mentioned when you were talking, life gets in the way mm-hmm. and we never get back to that. And that's why that is utterly critical. If you can develop that skill. Right. And and I don't know how much of a skill it is as much as it is. It's a is, habit. It's I a mean. habit, a work ethic, whatever right. it is. Because it's not easy to do. We're, we're normally, by the time I've accomplished whatever work I'm doing, I'm tired. I tire quickly, Haley. And then I don't want to well, spend time. Well, you're burning pretty bright, Dan. I you am. Know? <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to burn this bright all the time. And when I do stop, yeah. I'm ready to crash. But I still got to push myself that last little bit to put things away. Well, it's like pausing you know, throughout the job almost. It's not waiting until the very end because I think there are parts in jobs usually where you're done with that tool for this job. Mm -hmm. So it's slowing down to a certain point, right? Because part of the problem, I think, is that we just get going and going and we're not slowing down to really think about our workspace at all or what cleanup is going to look like. Well, I completely agree. And that's where, again, these are skills that will apply to so many different areas once you start developing this pattern. And I think of that with cooking. Oh, yeah. It's exactly what happens. And It's exactly what I do. I have to clear the workspace as I've finished with this, wash these dishes, move on while this is doing this. It's multitasking, but it's also putting things away. And it makes that next step, the final cleanup, so much easier because I've been on top of it. And the last thing I'll say about this is the one of the main reasons I think this is utterly critical is because of the first law of clutter. Do you know the first law of clutter? What do internet theorists say? No, this is me. Okay. <laughs> this is me making stuff up. My first law of clutter that I mm-hmm. tell the children when I first start teaching them about how much we should hate clutter. Wait, why isn't the show Dan's Laws of Clutter? I, it should be. It really should be. It should be Dan's Laws of Everything. But my law of clutter, my yeah. first law of clutter is that clutter grows. Sure. It breeds more clutter. That is true. If you leave a little bit around, everybody sees it and think, hey, it's fair game. That's the spot to put stuff. Yeah. And you come back in two hours. No, it's there's absolutely 70 right. things there. And they're all rolling around, uh-huh. doing their thing, making more The law things. of attraction. It's yeah. terrible. If you eliminate that, it slows it down, slows down that growth, stops that first law of clutter from actually taking place in your home. Now, huh. All right. That's all the time we've got for this segment. We've still got more things to talk about, right? Yeah, way more stuff. We feel like we're on a roll? We're on a roll. All right. We're not going to abandon this topic. We're going to just pause for a second, play some commercials, and when we come back, we'll pick it up with more of Haley's ideas, right? Another Dan's Law of Clutter, probably, too. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> That's all coming up in just a minute. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And Haley, we're right in the middle of a list of skills that yes. we're recommending if you want to try to stay organized this year. Skills exactly. to develop that will really help you. We already covered a couple we each had one. Mine was brilliant. Yours was really <laughs> good, though. It was a really good try. All right. Yeah, we'll try. see if I do better with this it, one. How's I, that? I don't know if you will, but give it a run. All right. So my next one is staying positive, which doesn't sound, I don't know. Yeah, how does that help? I'm so, positive. 
Internet theorists suggest oh, yeah. <laughs> that people with more positive outlooks on life do better with keeping healthy daily routines, which is what this really boils down to, right? It's sticking with a routine. Mm-hmm. And I think this is actually the part that I struggle with the most. Is staying positive? Yeah, well, I'm kind of a perfectionist, and that really has a negative impact on creating or sticking with projects or new routines, because if I see that it's not being executed at the level that I know that it should be executed at, mm-hmm. or if it's not, you know, great right You're away, yeah, then I, I just it. abandon it and I never go back to it. And so if I would just allow myself to say, okay, all right, you didn't do great today, but tomorrow you have another shot. If I got back on the horse, then I'd have a better chance of staying organized throughout the entire year and not just starting it, falling off, and then deciding, well, I just failed. I'm done. Well, I think, yes, that ties right in with one of my other ideas that I had, and it's something that I stumbled into. It makes perfect sense. Same thing, is to understand that this is a process yes, and not an immediate process project. Right. You know, just because you're trying to get organized doesn't mean you need to convince yourself that, boy, if in four hours I don't see some dramatic results, Mm -hmm. you know, I failed. And that's what you're talking about. And that is the tendency. We tend to do that. A lot of us do. And really write yourself a blank check here and let yourself take the time that it takes to get where you're going. Understand that you're as long as you're working towards that goal, That's the positive step that we're talking about. That's the skill that you're trying to develop. You may not perfect it. Exactly. Who knows how long? I mean, it's going to take me forever. I'm going to be way dead before I've perfected anything. (laughs) But if you keep a certain level of optimism, then that's what's going to fuel the dedication it takes to really stick with these healthy routines. Yeah, it feels touchy-feely, but it's actually good stuff. Yeah. What's next? What's your last one? My last one is kind of what... We just talked about in the last one, but it's having a productive daily routine. So part of that, the part that I'll touch on here is just making a to-do list and a reasonable to-do list every day. Mm -hmm. It kind of goes back to the perfectionist thing, too. If I don't complete everything on the list, then I feel bad about the day rather than looking at the things that I did accomplish. And I think the most important part of the to-do list is doing the thing that you don't want to do first and getting it out of the way. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely critical. Because once you're over that hump, everything else is gravy. Oh, my gosh. This day is amazing already because I already did that really hard thing. Yeah. My thing that helps me most of all, this is something, it's not a skill to develop. This is just something to practice, put into practice. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite of what we said we were going to do in this this segment. (laughs) This is literally a practical thing. I've talked about it a hundred times. Anytime you've got something like this to do, cleaning, a project of any kind, really, if you can, set a timer. I do that all the time. Mm. And it's an easy way to get the kids involved, to get other people who don't want to be involved, right. involved. Because if you say, we're going to work for 15 minutes, set a timer. For a half an hour, set a timer. It, it's time that it really moves very quickly when you're racing. Because right. there's a part of you're us. You're racing the clock now. Yes. We, we instantly become competitive. Mm-hmm. And that part makes the time go faster. We know there's an end in sight. Exactly. And we know that once that goes, and that's really critical to making that, that whole timer thing work, is you really do need to quit when the timer goes. Even if you want to keep going, just quit. Come back the next day, do the same thing again. I've had the kids clean yes. all kinds of my junk. <laughs> <laughs> By setting that timer. It right, tricks them. Sounding, I mean, the sound of cleaning the garage sounds crazy. Oh, but yeah, nobody wants to do clean that. Clean the garage for 15 minutes, see how much you can get done is reasonable. You'll be amazed how much you'll get done in that little 15 minutes. Really something to think about. We've got a lot of other notes. We're going to put them in the show notes if you want to check them out. Right now, we're going to take a break. But before we do that, before we go to commercials, I'm really curious if anybody out there listening has some really good organizational methods that you use that have paid off for you. If you do and you're willing to share them, send those ideas to radio at repcolite.com. If there's really good ones out there, we'll share them with our listeners. All right, when we come back, we're talking about a new purchase Haley made that has really eased up all the cleaning in her home. That's all next. Stick around. And we're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And this week, it's all about organization, cleaning, stuff like that, or at least largely, and... Haley, you bought something new, and I'm very excited about it because I love cleaning. 
I love right, the results of cleaning. <laughs> I love new implements that help me clean and make things even better. Mm-hmm. Right? That might simplify the process. Right. Now, you bought a steamer, yes. right? And I don't know anything about this. So you're going to have to just walk us through, and I'm going to ask, well, I'm a lot of try questions. to. I'm going to ask good <laughs> questions, but I'm not going to lie. Some of them might be ridiculous because that's how my brain works. But let's just start with describing it for everybody. You know, what exactly are we talking yeah. about here? It's not a it's vacuum a, type steamer. No, it's just a high pressure, really hot steamer. So it's called a Dupre Neat steamer. That's the model. Neat. Neat, like. Yeah. Boy, that's neat. Yeah. Like that? Or is yeah, it too easy? Like, no. That really N- doesn't matter. That's one of those dumb E-A-T. questions. Okay. <laughs> so what does it look like? It was like a little Yeah, it looks like a little thing. white box. Really simple. I liked the design of it first off. Just like a really dumb reason to buy something. <laughs> <laughs> it stresses the importance of good design though. Yes, there are it people does. like you who yeah. if it looks cool, they want to own one. Well, I clicked on it because it was like, Oh, look at this cute little white box. And then the reviews are really good. And it had all of these attachments, and it got really hot, up to 275 degrees, which is higher than a lot of the other ones I was looking at. And it could clean for 50 minutes with just the one fill. And it had really kind of amazing before and after pictures that people had posted in the reviews. So So, it seemed like a good product. That all makes sense. Yeah. You know, I get that. Why in the world are you looking at a... I mean, most people aren't just browsing the internet looking for a steamer. Yeah, I would have never what like, in the world to buy a steamer. No, I didn't either. When you mentioned <laughs> that you bought one... Well, first you mentioned we should talk about it. Yeah. And, and you were like, why? Why? Yeah. And then you mentioned that you bought one. I thought, why? <laughs> what in the world had you looking... Well, I know what had you looking, yes. but... What had me looking was my paranoia because of our upstairs neighbors. A few weeks back, we mentioned that my upstairs neighbors had bed bugs. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, really scary. This was before we were, well, as we were moving out of that apartment into our house that we just bought. So I was really worried about bringing anything with me. I wanted to clean everything really well. They had bed bugs. You knew that. Yeah. And then you started noticing little bites. Yeah, I had so, three on my hand. Yep. And then my favorite part of this whole story is that one of the days you just worked from home because you found a bed bug. You texted yes. me and said, I found one now. I literally saw one in my yeah. place. I'm going to work from home because I'm grossed out, right? Yeah. The next day, I felt bad for you. I felt I bad felt for bad you for that me. day. <laughs> <laughs> the next day you came to work and you're telling me the story and you had found it on your work bag, your little bag that you bring yes. with you. And we had just been traveling to all yeah. of our stores and that bag had sat in the back of my truck. Yeah. So for the past month now, really, Dan has been extremely oh, paranoid. <laughs> I wake up at night and get a flashlight out. I'm not joking. I'm looking for bites. Oh, I'm looking for my bugs. Gosh. You do not have bed bugs. I hope I not. don't even have bed bugs. Really. So you bought the steamer with that in mind because that is free. Yeah. Once you get that yeah. in your head. And really, I think all it was in our apartment was a little hitchhiker that got attached to me in the hallway. And that was, you know, all it took for me to just be <laughs> well, heck, pedal to the floor. Too. Like, we're cleaning every single thing in this apartment. Just you having them in your apartment freaked yeah. me out. So I get that. Yeah. So you bought this steamer with that in mind. And I was still, you know, as much as that did freak me out, mm-hmm. that's still, man, For I was thinking for one use... You know, right. to kill bed bugs, it's yeah. not going to hopefully be a regular thing for you. Right. If it is, there's maybe another <laughs> job somewhere else for you. But then you talked about how there's so many other things you can do with this, yeah. and I was blown away. Well, because so I let's looked go through it. with the bed bugs in mind. I just wanted to be able to kill them. But then I'm looking, and there's all of these attachments to clean all kinds of things. So it comes with 10 different attachments. You can clean things like your car, your grill, uh the grout in your shower, carpet, upholstered things, the walls, the floors. And the reviews you said were great, and they had great before and afters, but we've all been there where we've seen that and it didn't plan out in reality. Mm -hmm. You ran it through the paces from what I understand, correct? I did. You snapped an entire, just crazy (laughs) amount of before and after pictures, right? And Mm -hmm. they were brilliant. And I was so proud of myself because I am... So notoriously bad yep. at taking before pictures. Well, we did that segment a while yeah. ago, and we stressed that it's so important to do that. Get those before pictures. And you did all of that. Mm-hmm. Did all and, of that. And then something happened with your phone, and it erased them all, is the yep. story. I think you just I didn't do it. I came into work, and my phone has... It's it's a new phone. Yeah. It's 
saying, hello, I'm a new iPhone, basically. You know, how does that even happen? I don't know how it happens. We can't solve that here. But the bottom line is all of your pictures are gone. Yeah. All of my apps. So we're going to have to we're going to have to rely on your truthfulness to help us understand if this really worked. Now, what I want to get to is all the different things you did. I want to know the success level of it. So let's just start. What was the yeah. first thing you tackled? The first thing that I tried it on was the stove, because we just got this house, and the stove that was in there is white enamel, and it's a gas burner, and it had just like black around two of the burners, Sure, a lot of it. Yep. And it, honestly, it was so black and burnt looking that I thought that's just metal. It's like the enamel was scraped off sure. or something. And I remembered what That's you what had. That's I thought I yeah. had on mine. Exactly. I used you moved a real... in, you thought, oh, this is just the way that it is. Found out that with a real heavy-duty cleaner, really nasty cleaner, I mean, it'll do it, but yeah. it, it burns, it'll take paint off, all kinds right. of things. I was able to get those cleaned. I'm very curious, how did it work with the steamer? Really well. Really? So no chemicals at all, just this no hot steam? No chemicals, hot steam. It wasn't, hot steam. It was I don't not... Think that, I guess there well, is cold steam, right? There's cold mist. There's still... I don't want to be an idiot, but I've already burned that bridge. Okay. So <laughs> the steam did it, huh? Yes, <laughs> it did the job. It wasn't magic by any means. I mean, I had to yeah. use some serious elbow grease. elbow grease, but it did come off. It It's all white now. So all right. All right. So kind of amazing. It worked on that. What'd you tackle next? The next thing that I tried it on was this couch that we just got. Really nice, mid-century couch, really light gray wool upholstery. Mm -hmm. And we had movers do the furniture for us, and we didn't notice it right away, but there's like a big black, it looks like a scuff mark, you know, along the side of the couch. Like they had brushed it up against the truck or something. Mm -hmm. And great. Okay. (laughs) We've got this new wool upholstery to take care of. And I read online that you're not supposed to use chemicals on that kind of upholstery. Just use hot water. Okay. And I'm thinking there's no way that hot water is going to get the stain out. But I thought, well, the steamer might. So I tried it on that. It's still kind There's like a ghost of it, but it's basically gone. So you're dabbing at it with a rag. You hit it with the steam Mm -hmm. and then dab at it with a rag. Yeah, exactly. That's the process. It didn't smear it. It didn't. No, it didn't smear it. Did you test it or? No, I just went okay, for it. Okay, okay. We'd recommend testing it. <laughs> <laughs> this was your stuff. I don't care as much. But anybody else on our say so, test that to make sure yeah. you're not going to smear it and make it worse. Test a small sure. area. Yeah. But it did re- reduce it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. So you were still happy. You have to look for it now. And before it was like, well, that's there. <laughs> so a thumbs up on that one. Huge thumbs up. A couple more I really things. didn't think that was going to be something we could get rid of. Uh, the next thing was the carpet leading up the stairs. Um, it's nice carpet, but there was all these like little black slash gray stains. It was like a cat had run through paint. You know, it was on every single step. It's people carrying coffee up the steps and then they dribble a little bit. No, it was blacker than that. Well, dirt collects in that over okay, time. Okay, maybe, yeah. Who knows, Haley? Yeah, How did it who work? Knows? Did it clean it? It worked really well. Again, it looks like new carpet. I cleaned all of the steps with it, all of the carpet on each step. Kind of amazing. So again, it's still steam it yep. and then hit it with a, a a rag. With that, I didn't really need to hit it with the rag. Like It came up really easily. came I up just onto used, what, though? Where did it I, go? Into the air. I don't know. <laughs> 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 that evaporated. Um, yeah, I just used this like little brush attachment. Okay, there's and, a brush attachment. Yeah, there's okay. different attachments. One of them is for carpet or upholstery cleaning. And yeah, I could just like scrub it. It's not putting a lot of moisture going. into the carpet? I think you'd have to stay there for a really long sure. time for it to get like soaked or something. Okay. Um, but it's really high pressure steam, so it does the job pretty quickly. All right. So that moved pretty fast. Yeah. How about one more thing? I tested it on the grout in the bathroom. What was the grout before? Because we don't have that picture. Um, It was definitely white because at the top of the shower where it wasn't dirty, you know, things weren't gathering, it was white. Mm-hmm. But at the bottom, slowly starts to get kind of like that dark black yeah, brown color. Yeah, they probably color. had children. That's where they normally yeah. throw their... Filth so too. they did. They have two boys. Yep. See, out. told you. <laughs> that are short people. And I didn't love it for that. It okay. did clean it. Like I could see the dirty water running down. Yeah. But it didn't necessarily get rid of the stain. All right. So it didn't do much for the grout. 
But what about things like soap scum? And did well, you it test it on that stuff? Well, cleaned the shower really well. I mean, okay. any of that soap scum, you know, the dirt that was built up in the grout lines, you could see the dirt coming out of everything. I, I, I'm specifically, I want to pull this out of you because it matters so much to me. <laughs> the soap scum. Did, oh, yeah. How easily did that come off? Extremely easily. Like super easy, like magic. Yeah. That's like where it started to feel like a magic wand. Oh my goodness. The stains and things that I was talking about before were not fun work to do with this. The fun of this thing came when I was just doing general cleaning. That, you know, hard water marks in the kitchen sink just disappeared. Really? I mean, Those two? the stainless steel kitchen sink looks brand new at this point, just from running the super hot steam over it and then wiping it down afterwards. And it that's was it. amazing. Just run it over exactly. it. Exactly. So you're not scrubbing? No. I want to go back to the soap scum one more time. Not scrubbing. Oh, see, that's a little bit what heaven's going to be like. The soap scum's going to just come <laughs> right off. Like... <laughs> oh, I so I so hate the soap scum. It's the, the the eternal battle. I have a great cleaner that I like, but it still takes. I some will elbow say grease. though, the thing about cleaning the stove that I didn't like and the the bathroom that I didn't like is that this thing, when you have the little cleaning nozzle attachment on. It's going through a very small opening at this point, and that steam is loud coming out of that when it's going up against a reflective surface. Oh. I would recommend people wear earplugs. Oh, that's the kids it's wear so earplugs. Loud. The kids wear earplugs already when I clean because I'm yelling about the soap scum. So <laughs> I can handle the blast from the steam. It feels like I was using a pressure washer without you know spraying water everywhere. It's just I mean there's All a right. lot of steam but you you've you've sold me on it. It's the what again? The Dupre Dupre neat steamer. Okay, we'll put a link to that in the show notes. We'll put a list of all the different things that you can clean with it. Roughly what what did it cost? It cost me 150, but that was a sale price. Normally it's listed at 199. Is it worth 199? I think so, because okay. it would make cleaning everything so much easier. There's no products to keep track of. I'm not switching the type of cleaner that I'm using from room to room. And it's just water. There's no smell. Easy it, to haul around? Yeah. It was super light. I mean, that's the other thing. This thing is really lightweight. It's got a handle on the top, and it has wheels. So it just drags right behind me, and the hose is super long, too. Did it leak? Anything like that? No No leaks. dripping? No nope. burning hot couplings or anything no, like that? No, yeah. Everything that I was holding stayed, I mean, it wasn't cold by any means, but it did not get super hot. All right. We'll put a link in the show notes for exactly what Haley bought. Check it out. Now, there is one other thing that you could probably do with it yes. that we haven't talked about, but we're going to, and that would be to use it as a wallpaper stripper. Yeah. Yes. Now we'll talk about that in just a minute. Stick around. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore and Haley. Last segment, we talked about your steamer. Yeah, my right? new steamer. All kinds of cool stuff that it can do, and we ended the segment talking about one other thing that potentially it could be used for, and that's steaming off wallpaper. Yeah, I really liked the potential of that because it's kind of my biggest fear of putting up wallpaper, which I really want to do for the design impact in a couple spots in the house. But the fear is, okay, I'm not going to be able to strip this off easily if I change my mind in the future. See, now that's a false fear. If you install it correctly, pulling it down and removing it is not as bad as you think. Okay, that's good. But if it's not installed correctly, it can be a real pain in the neck. And a lot of people deal with that. A lot of people hate taking, most people hate taking Yeah, I don't know that many people enjoy it. No, there's a very few people that celebrate when that's on the you know list of to-dos for a day or a week or whatever. But wallpaper steaming is one way to get that off, and this steamer would function for that, right? Yep. Um, people in the reviews actually use the floor panel for that because it's the largest attachment, and they said that it worked really well, actually. Right, right. So... With all that said, you know, that's just one more reason to maybe consider that steamer that we talked about in the last segment. Right now, though, let's transition into dealing with wallpaper because people hate it so much, hate the idea of yes. stripping the paper down that we get all kinds of questions. And one of the most common questions is, can I just paint over the paper that's on the wall. Yeah, walls. it seems like the easy solution, but it's really, I mean, you can tell one. I don't think it ever is convincing that there is not wallpaper there underneath the paint. You can always tell. Right. See, patterns with most papers, most papers are going to have a pattern of some sort on them. And when they're all put together, the pattern hides the seams. 
right? Exactly. And the better job you do installing it, the better those seams disappear. Well, the thing is, when you remove that pattern by putting a solid color of paint over it, mm-hmm. all of a sudden those seams really, really They're jump out so at you. so obvious. So we would recommend, you know, for a number of reasons, not to go ahead and paint over that paper. It's still better to strip it off and go through the work. And we're going to walk you through a real bird's eye view of what that work looks like. Yes. But the seams... Becoming visible is one reason not to paint over the paper. Another reason is that it makes it way, way tougher to strip that paper down the road. Yeah, now you've painted over it. You've sealed the wallpaper behind paint. So it's even harder now to remove it in the future. I mean, if you change your mind and realize after you've painted, oh, I can see all the seams and this does not look as great. Yeah. Now you've made the work so much harder for yourself. Right. And even with a steamer in that instance, mm-hmm. it can be really, really bad. Yep. So one other reason you, you stumble into is that water-based paint could actually potentially activate the paste that's holding the paper right. on the wall, reactivate that, and potentially... You could have that paper bubble up, come loose in a few places, even come down. Now, it's not terribly likely, but it is possible. Yeah, you could end up with a mess. Now, if you do decide that you absolutely have to paint that paper, because it can be done, Yeah. and maybe for your situation it, it, it makes sense, well, you could just go straight to water-based paint and you know, roll the dice on that. Chances are you'll be okay. It's not going to take the paper down. Chances are it yeah. won't do that. <laughs> but if you want to completely avoid any possibility of that happening, an oil-based primer would be the way to go. Put that on first right. and then your water-based paint Now over you time. don't have the water seeping in and activating the adhesive under the paper. Right. But with all of that said, I don't want to give the wrong idea. I don't want to encourage this because... It's just not a great system. If you're ever going to want to take that paper down, you're better off to go through the work of removing it now without putting paint over top of it. Yeah. Just making it worse if you put paint on it. Yeah. So when you're stripping it now, because that's the best option, if you're not going to use a steamer like we've talked about, which is a great tool, recommend it. There are other tools that you want to collect. Things like the Diff wallpaper stripper. That's a solution that you would spray on. Paper Tiger. It's kind of like a... A scoring tool. A scoring. Yeah. Thank you. The face paper won't allow usually water to penetrate through it. The stripper solution won't get through it. So you've got to score it. You've got to put little holes in it. That's what this paper tiger will do. It will safely do it if you use it in the correct manner. You can use uh, coarse sandpaper to do the same type of thing as well. Yeah, you said there was a painter that used to just scuff. Yeah, just scuff it up with sandpaper. And spray it down. Right. I, I like the paper tiger better. It's a little quicker. But Either one of those things will do. You need a spray bottle to really put that solution onto the wall. We have a pump-up spray bottle, like one of the little garden sprayers, only this is a little tiny handheld one. It's great for stripping paper, but it's also great for just general cleaning. Really like that. Basic tools like that. Get a flat putty putty knife. knife, Right. Lots of towels, drop cloths, things like that, because it can be messy. The biggest thing. You know, we don't have time to go into the whole, here's how you strip the paper down. The biggest thing that people mess up when they're trying to remove wallpaper mm-hmm. is, well, first off, they didn't install it correctly in the first place. Or the people previous to them Right. Didn't. Use a wallpaper sizer. If you're putting paper up, the wallpaper sizer is really critical for removing the paper down the road. But you can't fix that now. So the biggest thing that you can that people do wrong when they're pulling paper down is they just don't give the stripping solution time, time to work. Right. We spray it on the wall and then we want to get at it quicker. And really the thing to do is to score the wall, spray it on and let it soak 15, 20 minutes. Keep it wet. Come back and tug at it a little bit. If it's still not coming off easily, spray it down again and just let it work. Get coffee. Do what you've got to do to let it work. It seems counterintuitive. Because I'm not doing anything, but it's way better than rushing it. Yeah, I've definitely heard of people not keeping it wet enough as they're trying to work it off. And I think that's a big one. Right. So that's the main thing. The other thing that happens that you really want to watch out for is once you've got that paper off, a lot of the times there's paste residue left on the walls. Right. Water-based paint can react with that and you can get a texturing problem. So you've got to make sure that you clean those walls down really well. And it might even take a little bit of wiping them down with a thin down solution of that diff stripper again. Anyway, we don't have time to go into more of it. If you've got questions about stripping paper, it's not as bad as you might think. It's definitely better (laughs) better to take it off than to paint over it. Stop out at any Repco Light or Port City paint store. Ask us questions. You can go online and chat with us there. We'll get you the answers and walk you through your project. 
All right, Haley, that's all the time we've got. We're going to wrap it up. If you want to catch this one again, you can find it online at repcolite.com. Whatever you do today, you don't have to make pain a part of it. I'm giving you a weekend off. Yeah, that's nice. Just have a great day. Have a great new year. I'm Dan Hansen. <laughs> I'm Haley Johnson. Thanks for listening. 